All right. The last block. So we will go to the duo talk, and also this one is uh, flying solo, uh, about thinking assistance. So this moonshot aims to supplement and support human thinking, to have a digital sparring partner that understands, cooperates with, and supports you in order, in order to strengthen your abilities. Speaker of today will be Dirk Valand. He's an associate professor in process analytics on multi event data at the TUE. He's responsible for the master data science and artificial intelligence at the TUE. He insights gained in numerous uh, industrial projects led to the idea of encoding behavioral information in knowledge graphs, a cornerstone of thinking assistance. Dirk is a person who always thinks holistically. He just mentioned while having coffee, um, except he mentioned when planning a holiday because that's uh, he gets involved when things are <laughs> going wrong. So welcoming to the stage, um, Dirk Valand. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the kind introduction. Um, when preparing the presentation, Joost, uh, who can't be here today, asked me, well, can you give me some tips for uh, giving such a talk? And I said, well, practice your first two minutes by heart. <laughs> now he's not here, and I have to jump in for him, so all that preparation went out the window. Um, I would like to tell you about the journey we took together um, from TU Eindhoven and von der Lande on developing the idea of a thinking assistant. Um, we already got the introduction uh, what my background is. So Yo's background is um, uh, he's leading the digital service factory within von der Lande after a long career. Um, and he's really looking into turning digital to solutions into something that uh, yeah, integrates with the von der Lande systems and that actually delivers value to customers. So he's really always asking me whenever I come with the, up with a nice idea, and how is this going to generate value? Which is a very difficult question for people working in AI because AI sounds nice until there comes the question, where's the value? So um, what I would like to take you through is first give you a bit of an introduction of Fundalanda because maybe not everybody knows who or what Fundalanda is. Uh, they're building material handling solutions. So I'll give you an overview about this. A bit also about the trends and complexities there and where exactly von der Lande sees the need for AI. And we'll look at the target users, right? So the people working with these systems and what they would expect from an AI solution. And then I will take you into a deep dive of a journey of the last six years in which we, Joost and I worked together, of how we came up with the idea of the thinking assistant, starting from item, item tracking over system knowledge to the thinking assistant. So von der Lande is one of these companies that is a market leader that you never heard of. They're market leader in material handling solutions, for example, baggage handling systems at airports. If you travel from Schiphol to um, anywhere in the world, your bag will go through a von der Lande system. Your parcels that you're ordering right now go through the automated warehouse solutions of von der Lande and through parcel uh, uh, sorting systems. You see these numbers up here? These systems are very complex and have to handle a large volume. And von der Lande does here the integrated approach. So they provide the hardware, the systems, the software to run them, as well as the, so the services around it to maintain them because these systems are so complex. The mission of von der Lande here is continuous improvement, right? So this starts with the design of the system, but then goes along the entire life cycle of kind of making it fit and performant when it's deployed, ready to scale up with increased demand suddenly COVID hits and you have tripled or quadrupled the amount of parcels that have to go through your warehouse, or a drop in passenger numbers and then your system has still to run, or expansions of systems. So this is the, this is the critical kind of mission statement of Van der Lande, that it's not just building it and it's there, it's kind of taking it on a journey and continuously evolving the system. Van der Lande has the global install base. They have uh, solutions installed in over 100 countries with uh, offices and locations all over the world, which also means they have a very broad base of insights and experiences of building and maintaining such uh, material handling solutions, which puts them also into, into a unique position of understanding how to standardize these systems and how to 
develop solutions and services that kind of can be applied worldwide rather than custom specific for each individual uh, customer. This is all very abstract. So I've here a short video that shows how a bag arriving at uh, Istanbul airport to OK travels through the system. It all starts with you arriving at check-in. You drop your bag at the check-in belts, and then it disappears into the system in the background. This is where Fundalanda takes over. It's not only the check-in where the bags arrive, they also come from transfer. If you have an international flight, then uh, people in the background put the bags from the flights over to conveyor belts. They're put into these yellow tops, which uh, make it easier to handle systems, and they go through processing steps like X-ray scanning, where you also see you have multiple parallel scanners and load balancing. You have manual encoding, where bags are linked to flights. If you arrive early at the airport, the bag goes to a bag store and is stored there safely until it's time to be released to the flight, and the release to the flight has to happen exactly on time so that your bag makes it to the flight. These bag stores are extremely complex and large, and the entire system is managed from a very large control room with many operators and screens. Once it's time to go to the flight, the bags travel to, uh, uh, they leave these yellow tops. They reach up the makeup area where they're put onto these carts or into these large silver containers uh, that you know, uh, also handling out of gauge baggage, which is really large and is handled separately. They end up in these large silver containers and travel to the apron, which is the area on the tarmac where the uh, aircraft is parked and then end up in the aircraft. So a simple thing as putting a bag into an aircraft is a very complex operation that requires a very large system. And I'm going to ask you in a few slides a question. It's a question already for the audience. If you're an operator in this room that you've just seen with these many screens, what would you like an AI to assist you in? What kind of support would you like to have from an AI solution when you're in charge of such a system? There's a couple of trends in material handling solution domain where kind of Fundalanda sees the need for AI. One of the trends is that hardware and systems are becoming more and more standardized. That means on one hand, there's less money in it. On the other hand, that means through standard hardware, you can faster build more complex systems that can handle larger volumes. So it's actually an enabler for better systems. At the same time, there's labor scarcity to uh, operate these systems. Uh, people have to be trained to manage and handle such very large systems. And if there are fewer operators available, it is dif more difficult to operate these systems on the expected levels of quality. Same time, collection of data turns analog processes where people are doing work to digital processes where kind of through the recording of data you can uh, standardize things you can automate things and um, that also allows to outsource processes that for example an airport doesn't want to do anymore by themselves to a provider like Fonda Landa. So, but this outsourcing comes with the expectation of predictability in terms of quality and performance. So these Four things combined are a driver for Fundalanda to adopt AI solutions to improve the management of such a mat material handling solution over the entire life cycle, right? We're not just talking about specific moments, but the entire life cycle. This also means because such a material handling solution is not just a, a thing, a small thing in its own, it's actually a system of systems environment where there's ne several different uh, domains and stakeholders that are kind of interacting with each other. So here's a couple of things that are just around getting your back to your flight. So there's the general aviation domain. Uh, think of uh, the IAT, IAT, EATA rules, for example, how big your back can be, what can be in a bag when it goes onto an aircraft, right? These kinds of rules. You have the airport domain, how an airport is operated, as international standards for operating airports. You have airport operations like flight schedules, gates, and so on. You have the passenger domain of how a passenger comes from arrival through check-in, security, 
shopping area, gate to the aircraft, and many other domains that are part of, uh, of an airport. Across this are things like the baggage, baggage handling domain, right? So baggage operations, where both the pa passenger and the airport are involved. Other domains like the ULD, these are these silver containers that take all the bags to the aircraft, the passenger is not involved, or the apron, right, where the aircraft is parked. Other domains, again, cut across. Each of these domains have their own processes, the way how a passenger is supposed to go through the airport, how a bag is supposed to be handled, how a flight is supposed to be managed. And each of these processes manage a number of very difficult uh, different entities that are in complex relations to each other, right? So here you just see the entities that are related to managing a bag. So it's a surprisingly complex process when you automate something. So here comes, I'm coming back to my question. Imagine what would you expect from an AI solution as an operator in such a uh, baggage operations room material handling solutions room to support you. Do we already have questions from the chat? Sound? OK, yeah. very good. Hey, thanks, Derek. Uh, we have a few remarks yeah. and a few responses to your question. Very good question, very interesting question. Um, so from Joost uh, Kukertz, we've got an answer here. Oh, they're flying in. It's hard to keep up with this. <laughs> What comes to my mind directly would be to be alerted to situations that need an operator's assistance. Uh, so an AI could help then with automated even proposals of solutions uh, to help the, the operator know where to go. Kerchan van Houtem has come in and said an AI assistant might see problems that the operator doesn't see. Uh, Mark van Mael has come back with a response, a digital twin, he's thinking out of the box might be useful here, which can also be used as a synthetic data generator for stress tests. I think that's uh, trying to help make a better system. Natalia Mogles, oh my god, how many of these do you want? Uh, wait, maybe two more. <laughs> two more, okay, <laughs> tell me when to stop. Uh, Natalia Mogles has said, hard to think of it if you are not that operator. I would probably think of how to find a lost suitcase easily. We've all been there. Yes. Um, and then Eric Kroessen has said, as an operator, I wouldn't want the AI to automate my job away. A common thought. Oh, very beautiful answers. They cover a lot of the things we've been going through as well in our thought process. So thank you very much. Indeed, um, when you th think of an operator sitting in this room, they don't want their job to be automated away. You can't even do it because many of the problems that arise require creative solutions. So uh, many of the situations are maybe not exactly as uh, they have been in the past. So trying to learn classical, uh, trying to apply classical machine learning solutions to resolve or prevent particular situations once you're dealing with a system of that scale will be impossible. You never have enough training data to do it. So you rather want smaller scale things to surface like noticing out-of-order operation conditions, problematic bags, lost bags, and to support the operator in seeing through this massive system the parts that are that require attention and also how it connects to a possible solution. So I would like to take you now through the journey um, that we took and kind of reached that point and also think of a solution that enables to actually build an AI-based system that could an support an operator in this way. So we start with a very simple question. Um, suppose I just want to, or an operator would like to know, which may bags may miss a particular flight. That's something you want to prevent because everybody going on vacation, they definitely want their bags with them. Now there's lots of data collected. The data that is not going to help me in answering that question is how heavy the bag is or what its color is. This is certainly not data that I would need. What I need is knowledge of the system. The entire system, how it gets the bag from check-in all the way to the aircraft. Let's get there bit by bit. The first thing we analyze is item behavior. Funnel on the systems track the bags as they pass sensors, so we can funnel on the can monitor where a bag is traveling and where it's been. 
A standard solution for analyzing such event data is process mining. It allows you to analyze the flow of all the items and create models or graphs like this, which an operator or maybe an analyst here, not an operator, could use to look at where our bags slow down. Right? It highlights visually the bottlenecks and the delays in the system, and also maybe undesired path a bag took much longer than you uh, want. The problem with these kinds of graphs is they're not related to the system knowledge, the system design as the operators know it. So one of the first things we did is we combined system knowledge and process mining to overlay all the process mining analysis of the event data over the system design. Now the operator can see bottlenecks, delays, and undesired path over the system design in a way that you're used to. That makes them already more effective. This is a screenshot of uh, the process mining product that the Fundalon developed for their systems. And here you see, right with the red arrow, a bag that's been delayed, or kind of in the orange path, an unusual path a bag has taken. Now, this allows to see where something goes wrong, but it doesn't help to understand why something goes wrong, why a bag is slowed down. So this could be another question operator has. Why is this bag slowed down? I cannot analyze why a bag is slowed down by just looking at an individual item, just like I cannot explain why my journey from here to Amsterdam took me four hours instead of one hour just by looking at the brand of the car that I have. I need to look at the traffic. I need to look at how the equipment is behaving. So this is another technique that we developed in the, in the project in the past. We call it the performance spectrum. Uh, on the vertical axis, you see say, the path of uh, uh, items over equipment, over different conveyor belts and processing machines. And on the x-axis, you see time. And here, in the green path, you see how one bag traveled over different equipment over time. And you see different pieces of equipment have different speeds. And that can be because some are longer, some are shorter. But what you also see, what we can see, if an equipment behaves differently than before if it shows slower performance than this uh, expected performance. And what we also can see is when the slow uh, performance propagates. This is like a traffic jam. When a car has to stop on the road, the other cars behind que are queuing up, and traffic also comes to a halt in other parts of the system. And you see that this pattern uh, of propagation of uh, stopping behavior repeats for example, in this part. Well, this is from a system test that was conducted, right? So it was designed to bring the system to a halt. That's why you see it this clearly. But you see these patterns also regularly uh, happening uh, under standard situations. So if we want to understand, and s well, this is a nice picture, but you want to kind of see it automatically. If you want to understand uh, why are bags slowed down, we can apply pattern mining over this kind of data and detect what we call cascades across equipment. Repeating patterns that re occur uh, regularly, repeatedly, with certain frequency, that show us how the system reacts to certain conditions. Now, what are these conditions? This could be, for example, uh, unusual high load in a particular part of the system that precedes a blockage, right? A lot of cars going through a small road, causing a traffic jam behind it. Or uh, it could be equipment uh, conditions, kind of the equipment operates uh, uh, differently, causing uh, uh, a conveyor belt to block. So we augment this cascade with uh, the context conditions which precede this cascade. And if we mine this over all the different data, we discover all kinds of cascades that describe how the system reacts to certain operating conditions. And this is no longer on the equipment level, but it's on the system level, because it's not for individual equipment. It shows uh, multiple pieces of, of equipment uh, involved in the operation. So. Before we go to the thinking assistant, I would like to show you how these three con concepts of item behavior, equipment behavior, and system behavior allow us to predict when, uh, which bags might be delayed. Suppose we are at this moment in time. And for pattern detection, we detect here these three conveyor belts which have stopped operating. We can signal this to the operator, right? It's uh, just pattern detection. We have low performance detected. And the operator then can then ask, okay, which bags are now at risk of a critical delay, what might reach their flight? We can look up the system behavior, the cascades we have detected, and uh, estimate how that blockage 
cascade may propagate further into the system. If we've seen that pattern repeatedly in the past, it may happen again. We can also estimate, based on the equipment behavior that we've seen uh, over the last minutes, the most likely travel times of the bags that might reach that uh, propagating cascade. And from that, we can calculate backwards, visualize the forecast on the screen, retrieve the bags that would be involved, and kind of indicate, for example, which bags need to be at the flight in five minutes from now and need an intervention. So that kind of reasoning was only possible because we build up system knowledge that combines item equipment and system behavior together. Now you start, start seeing that this gets complex. So in order to manage this, we're now working on a more structured approach, which we call the thinking assistant. This is how it works. We start with the system design as the base knowledge, because this is information of how the system has, is intended to operate, provides reference for all other data that is being collected. On top of that, we can uh, uh, add layers of data, for example, the item behavior, right? these uh, models that show the path of the items, and the equipment behavior, right? the performance spectrum, how the uh, 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 items move over uh, conveyor belts over time. And we're modeling this not as separate data sets, but we're modeling this in a graph, which allows us to connect the different layers with each other. So we're now connecting the item layer, the equipment layer, with the system layer which allows us to build an integrated model. Here's an example of such a graph. It's a knowledge graph of the system that encodes time and dynamics. We're at the moment using this kind of graph to analyze the uh, root causes for delays of these yellow tops that you've seen. They're not always arriving on time to kind of handle a large number of bags. So what are the causes for this? And these causes are manifold. They're spread out over the entire system. And the graph allows us to search for these patterns and the query for this information. What caused a top to not arrive? So the core of the thinking assistant, of our view, is a system knowledge graph. But to make it, and this allows exploration and root cause analysis, right? You can query the graph, you can explore it and visualize it. To make it truly useful, to make it proactive, we need to give the thinking systems a the possibility to evolve, so uh, further grow in knowledge. For example, by including pattern mining and outright detection techniques on the graph, which allows us to detect things like the system behavior, these cascades that you've seen before. It's just another layer that's connected to the other parts. It always happens in the context of the system, as you've seen it. We can add more information to it. And so, well, first, uh, one step back, right? This allows us, with the pattern detection, to do signaling, uh, to do uh, um, problem forecasting by also including prediction and forecasting techniques that operate on the graph or certain features in the graph and then uh, could help the operator, for example, see which bags are at risk of being delayed. We can expand the graph with more information, for example, about the context, flight schedules, weather. Remember this big picture that showed all the different domains that kind of have all their own constraints and data that influence the managing of bags. They can be included here to provide further information. Finally, and this is where the thinking assistant really starts making a difference, we can also record or want to record the operator behavior. So if the operator does something, explores something, gets alerted, reacts to something, we also want to record how the operator resolves that particular situation. Connected to all the other information that we have there, right? We've seen there was an early warning of a, uh, that led to a propagating cascade with the bags being uh, uh, probably getting stuck. And this is what the operator did to get these two bags that need to be at the flight in five minutes to still reach the flight. We can record this by linking all the operator decisions to the events that have been recorded in the graph. If another operator comes along, maybe one that is less trained or is new to the system, the thinking assistant in a similar situation can show the operator that kind of solution, and the operator can decide themselves whether they would like to follow it or rather not follow it. You can also record maybe interventions that have been less successful. So by building up this knowledge graph over the different layers, connecting them, we're able to capture the, yeah, the system as a whole. 
and including the operator, and so put this thinking assistant in the middle between data and operator, so that the operator has an assistant on the side that helps them to really understand the system, see what matters, and make the right decisions. Coming to the end of my talk, so this was this journey that I took you. Uh, we've seen this video of how bags travel through a baggage handling system, how item tracking, uh, we extended this to kind of build system knowledge that covers the different domains. And we are now on the step of uh, uh, making uh, uh, the next step to the uh, operator support where we build up this large system knowledge graph and design the concept of the thinking assistant. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks, Dirk. Well, actually, I work at Van Alon as well, and even though Joost wasn't here today, I think you covered the story perfectly fine. So Thank you. the two minute preparation, uh, that was all fine, I would say. Are there any more questions from the audience? I, th I think uh, the, the enthusiasm earlier has, has, has tired them out. So <laughs> <laughs> um, we did have a few more remarks, if I can add them, because I think they're worth repeating. So uh, you, you've mentioned it, though. Indicate, this is from Marluce uh, Reminsa. She said, indicating possible delayed bags or predicting items when there will be a lot of traffic and work. I think that's really one of the hearts of your, your ideas, Dirk, uh, from what I heard. But another one from Miriam Seesling from uh, Tilburg, from Mind Labs. Uh, an AI assistant could, be the, could, do, could do the manual scanning of bags, which to me seems to be a tedious job for a human operator to do. This is extending the thinking assistant to robotics almost. What's yes. your view on that? Yeah, yeah. so I think it's a very good point. Um, we're now really focused on understanding the system, right? Supporting the operators uh, in, this, in this control room, right? To get a system level view. I think... Uh, um, Introducing AI solutions, right? Improved uh, um, uh, image recognition on these X-ray scans to kind of sort out a simple task from a difficult task is certainly a different aspect to it. I think the concept of the thinking assistant applies also there, but then probably very differently, right? You have to build up a very different kind of knowledge graph, not about the system, but about the bag and the stuff that's inside it. So, but the concept applies there as well, right? You model it, you include all the different information, and then uh, you train it. I have. To be honest, I have to be careful. I'm not an expert in computer vision, right? So there are probably facets to this problem that I'm not fully aware of. Um, but the idea is such that you have something that sits on the side and alerts you only in the situations where you really need attention and sorts out the simple cases. I think that is a concept that uh, has value. Great. Thank you so much, Dirk. And a, and a great opportunity for a multidisciplinary project in there somewhere as well. Yes. With some uh, computer vision expertise, which we have at the TU. Um, I've got a, a general point here from somebody I suspect you might know, uh, Daniel Barenholtz, because he was at the ICPM, the Conference on Process Mining, which I know you're at, yep. and was here in Eindhoven last week, I think. Uh, we got introduced to the idea of guidance in visualization. I believe AI will be very helpful here, in particular in MHS systems. I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, material handling solutions. Uh, uh, it's MHS, yes. Um, so uh, I think this is one of the big challenges also for, for visualization explainable AI, right? So, so uh, we replace, uh, well, we introduce this knowledge graph, um, which per se is a bit more interpretable, but it's going to be vast and very complex, um, which means if people really would like to understand, well, we need really good visualizations for it, uh, especially if you try to understand the more intricate interworkings of different parts of the system. So I think there's a huge challenge both to visualize this information in a way that is uh, suitable for the operator, but also to yeah, guide engineers who kind of e further develop pattern recognition and forecasting techniques to identify the right features and to identify right the right cause-effect relations. So I think visualization is a key aspect here, but I think it's central uh, to make this, this kind of technology yeah, also accepted by the operators, right? By making it explainable and understandable to the operators who have to work with it, uh, you increase acceptance. Very good. I have more questions. How much time do we have left? You can add. Uh, I can throw in a few yeah. more. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Miriam, Miriam is, is uh, very productive at the moment. So hi, Miriam. Uh, she was wondering how you'd record the operator data. Uh, very good question. Uh, at the moment, we do not yet, but this is going to come. So uh, we're going to introduce, uh, uh, say, uh, so there's, there's several things that can be done, right? You can monitor what operators do in the operating uh, room, right, on their, on their consoles and dashboards. Uh, that's one. 
Um, so there's various techniques available to, to kind of do task mining, task detection. Um, at the same time, uh, what is also possible is because certain op decisions that are kind of result from the observations lead to, for example, changes in the way the system reacts. So you can also infer certain decisions that an operator made just by observing how the system reacted. You may still then have to afterwards ask the operator what they did if this is not automatically locked. So we're looking into kind of both possibilities, kind of logging what the operator does and kind of post-mortem uh, questioning of the operator for certain outcomes. I hear so many good ideas about interdisciplinary research. It's just amazing. Yeah. Well done. One final question. One last question, this time from Peter Chu. Uh, and I think this is a nice one because it goes back to the heart of engineering. So how can knowledge graphs support sales and operation, uh, the area of sales and operation, in particular to act on on-time delivery? Whew. Uh that question can go many ways. Uh, um, at the moment, I've just talked about uh, knowledge graphs really from the operating perspective, right? not from the sales perspective. But if you take it a bit further, if you see that the system is not capable of handling certain operating conditions and there's a need to upgrade the system or change the system, then, well, it of course also supports sales and kind of making the precise argument, this is the kind of expansion that is needed in order to get to the level of service that's required by your customer. Okay, great. I'm inspired. I want my own thinking assistant. Thank <laughs> you so much, Derek. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Derek. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs>